And I just want to give you an overview so you'll understand that when you go home and you look at this thing, the word pertains to you. It's not something that's read to make you jump, shout, and feel good. It's the word that that does a thing on the inside of you. And so, and then he said to the man, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, now God questions the man. So I answered, oh Lord God, you know bones. Again he, again he said to me, prophesy to the bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath. You need to hold on to that because there's something about the breath of God. There's something about God breathing on you. There's something that we just don't understand about. You can be in the valley of dry bones, but if God sends somebody by, he uh, might just do a breathe on you yeah, and yeah, causes yeah. something to happen that doesn't transpire in your natural mind. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs yeah, to say, amen. 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 I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. Uh-huh. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and breathe breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Wow. It takes something that God does to even make you recognize that God is who he says he is. Oh, I know you thought it just meant coming into the church house. I know you thought it meant just coming and sitting down on the pew, sitting there long enough where you felt like, let me join this church, and then you join this church. But there's something about this message that God is trying to get us to say, see, because I believe all of us are in some kind of a valley. Some of us are in the wilderness, and it took God sending a man in to come and talk with us. Uh -huh. Can you hear what I'm saying to you? Yeah. And when there's no breath in something, it is dead. Has yeah. anybody said to themselves, I'm just dead in my sins mm -hmm. and my trespasses. Do you remember the day when you came down the aisle, mm -hmm. gave your life to the Lord, because you recognized you were dead in your sins mm -hmm. and your trespasses? Maybe you were in the valley of dry bones, or maybe you were still in that wilderness, but somewhere along the line, you needed something somebody to talk to you, well, to get you out of the situation, yeah, that you yeah, don't even yeah. know how you got there, because it doesn't tell us how the bones got there, it just says that God took the man of God to the mm -hmm. bones, uh, to the valley of bones, where there was death and debris, but he took him there. Yeah. Uh, somebody yeah. say amen. Yeah, amen. So he says the man, when God said prophesy, so I did it. Has anybody ever done what God said do? Has yeah. anybody recognized that God may take you someplace that you don't even understand where you are? Have you speak a word that you don't even understand but you know it's God. Oh, come on, somebody. Wake yourself up. Because, see, you can't be in the church all these years. You can't be somebody that loves God and God never speak to you. You can't be where God can't find you. You can't be where God won't be able to take you. Because in this dispensation of God's word, he is saying there's a valley yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. of dry bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, we're going to stop right there and come back to that in a minute. I have spoken to you many times during this season, and I know if we really understand that God truly speaks to us, his creation, yesterday, today, and forevermore. Can anybody hear God? Can anybody hear the voice of God? Does anybody recognize it's God talking? Do you know that God speaks? Yes. Somebody better yes. say amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. amen. Yes. amen. Yes. amen. And I know that some read the Bible, but many act as if it's a fictional story and not the truth. See, when it's a fictional story, it doesn't take you to any place where you got to examine yourself. Because you might be in the valley of dry bones. But when it's not fiction and it's truth, and when truth is revealed, you recognize that if I'm in the valley of dry bones, I need help from somebody. Is there anybody in the house that recognizes that in the valley of dry bones, God's got to send somebody to me? Because if I I stay there, I stay dry, uh -huh. brittle, yeah. brittle yeah. Yes. broken up, yeah. laid down, mm. lifeless. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Yes. I yes. sense yes. that as I read this, it's all, it was almost like it was reading a fable. So I believe that some people read the word of God like it's almost a fable. It, and, and, and as we, as people, even Christians, <laughs> go to the flesh to learn how to love and mother and father and achieve life, I think we are a people of God, but we're not a people in God. Oh, come on, turn to your neighbor. We are a people of God, but we're not a people in God. Uh -huh. God, 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 God. Therefore, we learn our worth by who is like us and desire to have and achieve success and appear to have power, prestige, and position like them, but not when you go to the valley of the dry bones. Somebody needs to say amen. In this season of Lent, I've been telling you for quite some time that I I've been led into the wilderness, and I do remember God telling you that there was a wilderness for you. Yeah. Did anybody go home and discover that I'm in the wilderness too? Did anybody just come and hear the word but not apply 
the word. Because if you're of the word, you hear it for somebody else. But when you're in the word, you hear it for yourself. But if you're dead and dry, you can't hear it. You can't operate in it. And you stay in the valley. Somebody in the valley, low down, corrupted, messed up, with no life in you. And I'm not going to be very long because what God is saying to tell you that there's a place called the valley of dry bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when, listen to this, but I, like I had told you before, the word of God is saying to me that as I was looking at this fasting period, I said that I couldn't fast like the church told me to fast. I couldn't do it that way anymore because I knew that in this wilderness that I something I had to get from. And when I get it, then I'll be able to come out. So I don't even know if when I'm coming out after this Lenten season, mm -hmm. because the Bible says, because Jesus face as the Bible says to me that there is a way that seems right to man, but when we do it man's way, we just are walking around in dead man. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. As I was unsure, church, of this wilderness experience for me, I did put up for you. Did anybody go home and say, am I in the wilderness? Am I at a place in my life where I need to go deep down on the inside and recognize that I just don't want to give the world up? Did everybody go home in this Lenten season and deny themselves the right to do this and to do that? Did everybody mm. go home and say, I shall not come out. I shall not be moved until the Lord Speaks to me. Mm -hmm. Comes to see about me. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we do not have a high priest and cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11, 4 and 14. He walked through the fiery halls of temptation. He heard the hiss of the serpent. The same hiss that you and I hear every day of our lives. I know what the word Jesus has been speaking to us. There is church. There is Bethel Bristol. Hear me now. There is a wilderness for you because I think what I'm hearing. Now hold on to your seat. Is that this is the valley of dry bones. Uh -huh. Oh, now don't get mad at me. Don't get upset and don't turn off. Hello, somebody. Because the only person that would allow you to hear what God wants you to hear is someone that recognizes that he got the answer. But when we shut down because we don't like what we hear, then we can't get out of the valley of the dry bones and we find ourselves still lifeless without power and we wonder why we win no one because we're in the valley of dry bones. Uh -huh. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray you have been led by God into your wilderness. For it's in the midst of the wilderness where you will hear God. It's sometimes when it's quiet and there's nobody around that can discuss the situation. Because if I get somebody to discuss the situation, I never fall down on my knees and deny myself any rights. I never let go of what I want in regards to what God wants. Because I got a listening ear, so my prayer is that you went home in these last weeks and said, take me to the wilderness uh -huh. that I might live. Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. I believe that God is speaking to me through the church. I absolutely recognize that the church appears to be losing ground. The men and women are no longer encouraged to walk with God. It appears to me they are in the valley of dead man's bones. Therefore, if at the end of my personal time for me in the wilderness, I, Bethel, am willing to stay in the wilderness until I learn to crucify and deny my flesh. Right. My expectation is a greater vision or a greater understanding and a greater relationship with the Father as I learn to deny my wants, my desires, and my have to have. Has anybody... <laughs> <laughs> have everything you see that the world has yeah, and when they yeah, get it you don't know what to do with it and it separates you from the God that you love and so I told God don't bring me out 
until I learn how to deny the desires of my flesh. Amen. Amen. I recognize that the wilderness season is necessary. It's the start of real transformation. If you ever come and study with me and anything besides on Sunday morning, you will recognize the word transformation. Uh -huh. Because transformation says to me that God has, and you already came to God with information, in order for you to be converted for real, for real, and not just have church empty. Church empty means I sit on the pew where I feel like sitting. I come and do what I feel like doing. Hey. And nobody better mess with me because I go to church. But when you've been transformed, uh -huh. somebody yeah. recognizes yeah. it up in here. There's information I came in with that wasn't of God. It was of self. It was of what I needed. It was what I wanted. It was where I wanted to go. But when there's a transformation, uh -huh. God says I take it out, but I'm going to put something back in. Somebody needs to say amen. Yes. Uh, the start of real transformation because I sense in the realm of the spirit that God will shine a light to dispel the darkness of our souls, our self-centeredness, mm. our greed, our power, mm. our hunger for living the way that we desire. I truly desire for God to enable us to recognize his voice, to have visions to do his will and not ours. The reason why the church seems to be lackadaisical and crazy is because there's no vision in the house. And without vision, the people perish. And God is saying to the house of Bethel, you know why you still like where we are? And he says, this is to the house. So don't get all mad and don't get all guttery. Because when somebody loves you, uh -huh. when somebody loves you enough to step to you, I never like people that wouldn't tell me the truth about myself, uh -huh. even if I got mad at them. I didn't say I always received it, but I said, just tell me the truth. What's the matter? What's going on? And God is saying today, if you're living in the valley of dry bones, God wants to have a little talk with you. So he's getting ready to send somebody by to speak. Mm. Say so. Mm -hmm. To the dry bones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As I look at Ezekiel's vision, in sight of our dryness due to our lack of hunger and thirst is due to well, our desire well. of wanting the blessings of God without thirsting for the righteousness of our faith. Let me repeat that. Write it down. We need to put it down. Put it on the refrigerator. Yeah, we want the blessings of God. Yeah, we want the things of God. Yeah, we want God to give us everything that our little hearts ever desire. But we don't want to walk in faith in God. Walking in faith is not a feeling. Walking in faith is I have a confidence that God is who yes. he said he is. And he'll do what he said he'll do. And I don't care how long it takes him to do it. I'm not going to be moved. Be not moved. Huh? Our eyes, as we look at the valley of dry bones, I believe, is due to our malnourishment of the word of God. It is due to our lack of relationship. I hear in the realm of the spirit the same question that was asked of Ezekiel, asked of the church. Can these bones live? Mm. Yeah. Come on. Is it possible? Or is it too late? Can they live? For they now appear to lay dead. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to say amen. I trust that I know that God's arm isn't short, that it, can, it can't save. Neither is his ear heavy that he can't hear. I heard a desperation as the church cries out to him, Oh God, we are becoming tired of this dryness. Uh -huh. Our souls are perched, perched, and we no longer are satisfied. We desire to have power and the anointing that shifts the atmosphere as healings and deliverance and resurrections occur. I wonder what would happen if somebody spoke to the dryness of the church and the church heard and then when God continued to speak to it, it would hear what God was saying and would move into the power and the anointing of God. I wonder if we would be able to lay hands on the sick and call those things or not as if they were. I wonder what would happen in the church to say, God in the valley, come send somebody. Uh -huh. Pull me out. I heard in the church we desire a check from your master's hand as we, your church, our church rejoices in you and with you. I heard the church crying, I'm in distress as the pews are empty. I'm in distress as the sensationalism of our faith is how hard somebody preaches and not what is being preached. Put up in it and make it real. I'm in a season right. in, this church, in this church. It's in a season that the sinner is a I'm in the season, in a season the church is in a season. The sinner is a season cause for us to want to hunger and thirst after God's righteousness. I want to know, is there a vision in the house? Is there a visionary in the house? Is there a word from the Lord? I want you to understand this message from Ezekiel, vaguely speaking of the restoration of Israel in the last days. Mm. The church is need in, in need of resurrection. The church needs somebody oh to speak the word 
-hmm. and stop mm -hmm. giving us the feel good messages where we jump up and down and run up and down the aisles and uh -huh. have ourselves yeah. dancing like yeah. we're almost in the club. But God's saying, I'm getting ready to send somebody in. I'm going to send somebody in with a message to say there's dry bones yeah. and you're not in the church. You're in the valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. somebody yeah. say yeah. amen. And as time goes on, we will see the fulfillment <coughs> of God's word. But this restoration also was applying not only to the Jew when Ezekiel was talking, it also applied to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. God warned us to bring men and women out of the dry, barren places and give them the fullness of his heart. Lift up Jesus, Bethel. Lift up Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we do, but we go out into the highways and the byways. We say we belong to Jesus the Christ. We say we want somebody to be saved. We had a question in, Bible, in, in Sunday school this morning. And his question was, what does it mean when God says that if you make your bed in hell, I'll be there? And the answer was, it felt good for the moment, but then when you found out where you were positioned. Uh -huh. It seemed like it wasn't the right place to be. Amen. I'm reminded and I believe that God has brought us in this house. As Gentiles, we were grafted into the promises of the resurrection and is within his power to restore. However, it is not the question that God presents to Ezekiel for us today. The same, can these bones live? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have we, the church, continuously focused and been challenged to bring about only a resurrection of the building and the structure? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm to the decay that is made by man for lack of stewardship? Is it a trick of the enemy that the main focus is only to restore those things that make us comfortable in our relationship when we sit on the pew on Sunday morning? But isn't there a greater revelation? Isn't there a greater need? Isn't there somebody that is in the valley of dry bones that decayed and they have no life in it? Where is the one that will come and speak? Is it a trick of the enemy, I repeat, hmm. that our main focus is only to restore the structure that was made by man without bringing forth the restoration of the reflection of God's man called out? Do you understand? Are you in the valley of the dry bones? I hear God saying, these dry bones live. Is Bethel, is the Christian church possible in store for restoration? Echo ringing is in the face of the churches. The same question Ezekiel had back in his day. These can these dry bones live? I heard in the realm of the spirit, restoration begins within my people. I come as a voice out of the wilderness proclaiming, relinquish, restore, and resurrection. I am maintained and I am hearing in the realm of the spirit. The question that God asked Ezekiel is the same question he's asking the church. Can these dry bones live? Jesus. I hear in the realm of the spirit reminding the church, I, God, have relinquished and paid your sin debt by the shed blood of my son, Jesus. Jesus the Christ. I can. I'm able. Therefore, I have restored you to the place of being my sons and my sinners' daughters. Do you know him? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Ezekiel prophesied, he put a pen in the thing that blew my mind was he told Ezekiel, he asked Ezekiel a question. Mm -hmm. And Ezekiel says to him, you <coughs> Don't tune out now. This is so much more important than anything you don't like. Because God is asking, can these bones live? He didn't ask the preachers. He asked the man of God. And I'm asking the people of God, can these bones live? And the man of God does not take any credit. He says, you know. When Ezekiel prophesied, this says, then when Ezekiel prophesied unto the wind, the wind moved, the life was given. Those dry bones became exceedingly a great armor. So it was when God poured out his spirit upon those who left him the overflow. The next thing you need to know, I need to know, he is rising up a mighty army of spirit-filled people to stand with him. Let me make this very plain in my mind. If there's no life in the pew, mm -hmm. there's no life in you. Amen. Amen. If there's no power in your prayer, there's 
no life in you. If there's no desire to lift him up, that he'll draw all men unto you, there's a valley of dead bones. What God is saying to the church, and you can take this one to the back, he asked the question to the man of God. I asked the question to the body of Christ. Can these bones live? <clears throat> I don't understand why God asked. I don't understand why God asked. I don't understand why God asked the man. When he already knew the answer. Has God ever asked you a question that you know he already knows? <coughs> the identification that I see with Ezekiel was he had a relationship with God. If God can't ask you a question, how can he give you the answer? <coughs> Just, I have so much more, a little light-headed, I'm going to cut it short, but I know it's a trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And don't ever, ever think he can take me down, because he can't. Huh? Come on. There's too much power. Mm -hmm. Higher, power. higher. Mm -hmm. As I sat in my room, Chuck, I kept at hearing him say, to Ezekiel, speak to the bones. He didn't say speak about the dryness mm -hmm. of the bones. Mm -hmm. He didn't say speak about where the bones were laying. He said prophesy to, to the bones. The bones. Mm -hmm. Why? Come on. Because he had given Ezekiel a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Some of you are in the valley of dry yeah. bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you speak to the condition and the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. When we go to the doctors, we speak about the disease. Mm -hmm. And we ask the doctor what kind of medication we can take to ease the disease. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, as we listen to what the doctor prescribed, we're speaking to our bodies mm -hmm. and telling our bodies, be healed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened mm -hmm. in the church where there's no power? What happened in the church where there's always fussing and complaining? What's happening is God has called us out to look at Ezekiel and he's telling us to prophesy the word of God so you have to know the word. You can't prophesy your feeling of God. You have to prophesy the power of the word of God. But the church does not know the word of God and we are the ones in dry bones. Somebody's going to get angry. But I want you to understand this. I have to let this one go for now. But I'm bringing it back because God was speaking to us. He told us that we have been brought with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. When we come to this altar, it is not a lackadaisical thing. No. It is someone who paid my debt mm -hmm. in full. Yes. How dare I? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. How dare I? Hallelujah. Not speak the word of God. When I look at Ezekiel, he's a man like any other man. Mm -hmm. What are you speaking? Who are you speaking life to? If, if it's mumbling and, com and uh, complaining, is that life? Hello. Hello. Come on. If it's how you feel about this thing and that thing, but not the word, how much word is in our bellies, church? Mm -hmm. That we can speak a word in season and out of season. When's the last time you called somebody up and just prayed the word? Mm -hmm. Jesus. When's the last time that you said, I've just got to get a word on this? Mm -hmm. When's the last time that you realized that I'm in the valley of dry bones, mm -hmm. but God has asked the question. He said to Brother Ed, he said to Evangelist Drew and Sister Ruth and all down these pews, can these bones uh, live? Jesus, wow. yes. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Because it's communion Sunday, I need you to take a good look at your life. And ask God, would you ever use me to speak? 
Not what I think. Not what I feel. Not what I like. Not to who I like. Who I don't like. I told you there was a move in this house. And the move in this house is relinquish, restoration, and resurrection. And I will bring this back if you'll just bear with me. What God told me is you have had the focus on the wrong place. Hallelujah. But he said, but he said, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. My child. Mm. Hallelujah. My God. Mm. Can you hear me now? About your missing children. Can you hear me now? About your friends. Well, well, well. Can you hear me now? About your children. Can you hear me now? To speak to the dry bones. What happens when you speak to the dryness of our families and our churches? God has the bones connect together. And when they connect together, it's not the orchestration of you. He didn't tell you to do anything but speak a word to the deadness in our churches and in our world and stop trying to make a plan without God. Speak and the bone connected to the left foot will go to the left ankle. Speak and the right ankle will go to the right ankle. Speak and the eyes will go in the right position because you are obedient. Bethel, Bristol, don't you hear God calling? Don't you hear God calling? I didn't want it to be tight. Maybe that's why this attack. But have you ever spoken a word? Because when the Ezekiel spoke the word of God, after the bones had come together, he told him again to prophesy now to the dry bones. Mm -hmm. And when they that's got when they together, together, the spirit of the come Lord on. was released into the people. And they rose Whoa. up with yeah. power yeah. and authority yeah. and dominion. Yeah. And what has happened in the church is we have not spoken to the dry bones. And there's no power. There's no authority. There's no healing. There's no resurrection. There's no movement of God where we can lay hands on the sick. Yes, that's it. It's deeper than you think. It's deeper than you think. Don't you hear? God calling. Stop having ears to hear for your friends and hear for you. When's the last time you sat down and spoke a word into your families? When's the last time you sat down in the valley of the dry bones and watched him connect the broken, wounded hips? And the broken, wounded arms, and said, God said, Now speak my word. Because we have no power, we have no word, and the church has become a valley. Mm. Mm -hmm. What a visitation from the world. Crystal, don't you hear God calling you? Come on, church. The madness. And give it all to God. I beseech you on behalf of my Father. I speak to the deadness in your life of doing church the way you feel. I speak to the dryness of you that say, as long as I get there every now and then. I speak to the dryness of non-committed folk. I speak to the dryness that I have to be recognized if I'm not recognized. I speak to the dryness that I just can't let go and let God have at my children. I speak to the loneliness of those that wanted to get married and they're not married and now they're titty tatting around trying to hold on. I speak to the empty soul and I ask God to release an anointing in the house. Hold a bristle right now that then they go to the altar. It won't be because it's a discipline of the church. It will be because I am so glad that my sin debt is paid in full that I come to the altar and when I touch the wine, I feel the blood of Jesus healing me from the inside out. When I eat the bread, everything I have need of is performed. God said, speak, Pastor. Uh -huh. Yes, 
I'm speaking to you. And I'm speaking to you. But I will tell you this. If you remain in the valley. Come on. You will not prosper in the kingdom. Out of all the things in this world that satisfy you. Vision, heart, cola. God said you'll be satisfied in your flesh. You'll be satisfied with your things and your properties and your houses and your clothes. But when I come back, when I come back, mm -hmm. I'm not coming come back, back for this for things. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So God says today, in the broken, wounded world that we live in, church, speak my word. word. If you don't have the word of the Lord to speak, hush, child. Mm -hmm. If all you speak is your condition, hush, mm -hmm. child. If all you do is speak about one another, hush, child. Because Ezekiel learned to speak to the dryness until there was life in the bones. Mm -hmm. It never said that when they got up, they became an army. Where's the army of the Lord today? We've been here 169 years. And the pews are empty. Mm. Mm. But there's a resurrection in yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Turn around or turn to your left. Mm -hmm. And look at the resurrection in the house. Mm -hmm. We didn't get it. Mm -hmm. The kids. Do you see those babies? Mm -hmm. Do you see those babies? Mm -hmm. They're part of somebody speaking yes. the word of God. Yes. And so I know that you might not get this, but I had to do it anyhow because I want to be a person that speaks the truth of God's gospel mm -hmm. because we love him. Do you really want more than just to fill this house? Do you want your neighbors to be saved? Do you want your co-workers to be saved? Do you want to lay hands on the sick? My friend here can tell you, when you go to the third world countries, God works miraculously because of the faith of the people. She saw hands be formed again. Mm -hmm. But in here, we so mean and nasty to one another. Let's get ready to be Ezekiel's. Let's look at the decay. And let's speak a word. Let's not keep trying to dance ourselves in the glory. Can we do this? Amen. Together.